Okay, so if you're going to invest in a Roth IRA for your retirement and you're going to utilize options, specifically covered calls, is it better to do it with the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ 100? In this video, we are expanding on my previous video and spreadsheet where we looked at maximizing contributions over a 20-year period into a Roth IRA with the goal of selling covered calls and being able to retire as soon as possible. In the video, we transitioned from utilizing QQQ to SPY at the time we could acquire 100 shares. And the results were stratospheric. But honestly, we need to take a closer look at utilizing just QQQ because the difference in results could be life-changing. All right, guys, here's the spreadsheet. And for your awareness, all of my spreadsheets are available if you're a member of the Patreon community. If you wanna learn more about joining the Patreon community, getting access to these spreadsheets, access to my portfolio, all of the updates that I make in my own portfolio, and access to the Discord community, check out the link down in the description below. I explained the spreadsheet in much more detail in the previous video, so I will link to that right up here so you can check out that video and come right back to this one. Essentially, short form version, this data right here is the data for QQQ price changes daily, as well as the dividends earned and the contributions we're making, maxing out the Roth IRA all the way back from 2003 to present. We have our option data right here, as well as the calculations needed to estimate what the strike prices would be, as well as the option premium would be based on current option premiums and volatility. We have our shares tracked right here and our total balance right here. So I'm not gonna delay these results here. We're gonna jump right into them to see what the actual results would be. If we started with $0 invested in QQQ, sold covered calls on a weekly basis at approximately a 20 delta, where would we land after 20 years? First thing I wanna call out for you is that we do not have the ability to sell options for a specific amount of time. We started here October of 2003 and we actually did not start selling options until right here, which was December of 2004. So over 13 to 14 months later, when we could start selling covered calls. And you'll notice this option premium was very small at first and just selling one contract at a time for $13, $15, etc. And you'll notice we were selling just one option contract despite contributing money and reinvesting option premiums until all the way down here to right here when we transitioned to 200 shares and two contracts in September of 2005. We're gonna fast forward a little bit here to 10 years later, so October of 2013. October of 2013 right here and we're 10 years in and we've had some stratospheric changes here. We now own 1,848 shares worth $147,000. Now one thing I wanna call your attention to is here right at October of 2013, approximately 10 years later, our, our portfolio balance right here, you can see $147,000. We own 1,848 shares, and you'll notice we've only contributed to this account $45,000, but it's worth over $100,000 more than that. And that is because of the power of a little bit of dividend income for QQQ, but not a lot, but primarily all of this option income we're earning every single week are being reinvested back into more shares of QQQ, making that huge snowball get bigger and faster. Fast forward to 15 years. So we're gonna go all the way out to 2018. So here we are on October 1st, 2018, 15 years later. We have contributed $72,800 in contributions. We own 4,309 shares, allowing us to sell 42 contracts at a time, which leads to significant amounts of option premium. And you can see it here, the portfolio is now worth 802 thousand dollars where I was just five years earlier our portfolio was only worth about hundred and forty five thousand dollars and here we are at the end after 20 years of continuing this strategy in total we've contributed one hundred and two thousand dollars and we now own five thousand three hundred and thirty shares and the portfolio balance here look at this guys one million nine hundred and nine thousand dollars that is a significant chunk of change and the historical weekly or annual income from selling options just selling options two hundred and eighty seven thousand dollars in gross premiums so this is the original chart where some of you guys were interested in this line right here first off here look at this q you owning qqq all the way with versus without options the green line is if you were selling options in the way that i just showed you however the red line is if you didn't sell options contracts at all you would have a significant less amount of portfolio income as well as portfolio balance 
This was quite a significant drawdown here that occurred in 2022, but we'll look into that a little bit deeper here in just a second. It's kind of a weird graph to show you. Essentially shows the weekly net premium week after week. And you notice that pretty much all of it is pretty stagnant. Very few drops, significant cash flow. What you notice is that the majority of the time here, this is net positive, And there is quite a bit of volatility that does kick in in 2022. You'll see it right here. Significant amounts popping up right here where there were some large drawdowns on our portfolio. Now, at first glance, this extreme level of volatility and drawdowns on our share balances over time can look pretty bad, but the reality is the majority of these days and weeks along the way are net positive and we're accumulating a lot of shares as a result. So yes, there were significant drawdowns, but at this point we already had over a million dollars and a ton of shares and QQQ and it didn't actually have that much of an impact. Here's our net annual option income. So this is net. This is not the gross option premium received. You'll notice that incrementally here, all of these are positive except for right here in 2009, right after the housing crisis, this was negative, but just by a little bit. And the income and the net income started to grow quite a bit and a lot of this was reinvested. And then we had a significant drop in 2020 from an investing standpoint. Remember that a lot of people stayed in the market and it dropped hard for COVID and then it popped right back up. Here's a look at the share accumulation over time. Green line is with options, red line is without. Very smooth line for the red uh, QQQ, no options, but not a lot of growth. Whereas we see a significant level of growth from about 2011 all the way through end of 2019. Yes, there are some drawbacks that occur and it certainly has an impact, but these temporary drops in share price are normal and to be expected. And ultimately the big takeaway here from a share accumulation standpoint, as well as the net option premium is that as we get farther along, as we get become more and more successful, it seems like it's a really good idea to scale back your option strategy a little bit, be a little bit more conservative and aspiring to keep what you've already earned thus far far. So this type of situation shouldn't happen very often. We should be pulling back on our option strategy. So at the end of the day, when it comes to the difference between QQQ and SPY, ultimately we can see in looking at the what happened over the past 20 years that starting with QQQ was actually a really great choice. The extra volatility, the capital appreciation that occurred in conjunction with selling covered calls was a huge benefit. But as we can see, the extreme amount of volatility you might consider it one time, but it could happen again in the future. This extreme volatility that occurred in 2020 and 2021 severely impacted how much option income we earned. And there's a case to be made that maybe a more conservative approach once you are pretty successful may be a good idea, either by switching to SPY from QQQ at a later date or utilizing a more conservative option strategy as you see more and more success. Hopefully you found some value in this video. Make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. It's my goal to respond to all comments left on the day I post a new video. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching.